Thanks, Lita. You're welcome. Well, it's nice to see some familiar faces and to meet some new people. Just, I've had Beth's food and it is so nourishing. I love Beth's food. Mm -hmm. And um, I also know Jenny and adore Jenny and her kids. Shelby, you don't remember me, but I remember you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, tonight's talk is uh, Ayurvedic body care practices which is one of my all-time favorite things to talk about, as well as to practice. So I only have 30 minutes for this talk, so I'm gonna kind of zoom through a bunch of different practices. Um, and I have some resources available for you in the back of the room that, you know, I'll, it'll all become clear, I think, I think. But, you know, the reason why we start, well, actually, before I open my, my, my one of my favorite books. Um, how many of you have never heard of Ayurveda and you're like, what the heck is she talking about? Okay, okay. So just really quickly, Ayurveda is the Indian holistic healthcare system. It's a sister science to Chinese medicine. So similar to Chinese medicine, which is rooted in five element theory, so is Ayurveda. <coughs> but the language is a little bit different and the approach or the um, the applications are a little bit different, which is mostly just the way that they've evolved in these different parts of the world. So Ayurveda's elements are ether, which is your thumb, is your ether finger, runs all the way up to your heart, heart and lungs. Air, ether's like gas also. Air is your middle, or your index finger. Your middle finger is fire. I don't need to show you that. <laughs> your ring finger is water, and your pinky finger is earth. So those are the five elements. So you're kind of like, okay, you have them in your body, and it just tra it's like same as Chinese medicine, meridians running through the body, starting from those those most um, extreme points and traveling to the center of the body, affecting organs and tissues all throughout. Okay, so I'm showing you my favorite page in my favorite book. I don't want to lose my Beth's menu. <laughs> so what system is this? The lymphatic system. Right? See these, oh oops, I'm covering up the microphone. But see the nodes here? Like I don't know if you can see it, but there's like little almost bulbous uh, round points and then there's the sort of looks like veins like a venous return so that's the lymphatic system and what I want you to really uh, see in this in this image is that we have a lot of lymphatic uh, nodes right around here in the armpits and around the breast tissue the sides of the neck also behind the knees the tops of the feet um, those are where they tend to uh, be, there tend to be the most of them all, all at once. And when we're talking about health from an Ayurvedic standpoint, there's two really core systems that we want to make sure are operating or functioning at their highest level or as high as possible. One is your digestive system and the other is your lymphatic system, your immunity. And they're really interwoven. Have you ever heard that? Like your immunity is in your gut, yeah. right? So they're like super, super connected, partly because the digestive system, I mean, right? It's what we, yeah. It's what we, uh, you know, we whatever we consume, whatever we burn, that's our fuel. But whatever waste products is created by the digestive system is the lymphatic system's job to carry it out of the body. And so I call it kind of the garbage collector. It's like they're the garbage collectors of the body. So, you know, when they get really overloaded and they're just like, oh my God, this family is creating so much crap. <laughs> they're just like, I cannot get to the dump fast <laughs> enough, like literally, right? So when your digestive um, system is slow, we get sluggish. And it could look like constipation. That's one form of sluggishness but also just where you're like, God, my metabolism is so slow, I feel like I'm full really quickly, or I eat and I'm immediately bloated or tired, 
right? These are all signs that your digestive system is a little bit off. And one way that we can get to it through body care, not just through the food, is by addressing the lymphatic system. Make sense so far? Okay, so everybody stand up just for a moment. I mean, you've been sitting, since I've come in, you've just been sitting there. So, you know, just kind of bounce. <laughs> and really try to feel the soles of your feet on the floor get onto the balls of your feet so you really do like start to feel like you're moving your blood up right you're just trying to get things to go upward okay good take it out take it up and then take a deep breath in good and release and go ahead and sit back little energy thing okay but when we bounce and we try to move the energy up that helps the lymphatic system to move because it's only a one-way system. It only runs up the body, just like venous return, venous return, only goes to the heart. Uh, the lymphatic system is a one-way system. And it only really gets enough movement if you manually do something to make it move. So, you know, bouncing is great. Like bouncing on a trampoline is one of the best ways to get your lymphatic fluid moving. But so is boot camp, so is yoga, so is running, so is just bouncing. You know, you could just do that. Like, you know, or at the health fairs where they have that machine. <laughs> what is going on? But that's really great for your lymph. Okay, we want to talk about things that you can do at home because I don't know how many of you have ever been to India. Nobody? Oh, okay. Yay. Oh, cool. So, I don't know. I mean, this is just my, it's my own experience. I've been there three times. It's one of my most favorite places on earth. But it's really like, if you want to learn how to just like make shit work <laughs> with what you've got, you want to go to India and be like, okay, I see. Right? It's just like a propane tank in the corner and one burner and like you can do the most amazing body work with the oil, the dirty looking oil. It's not dirty, but it looks dirty because everything else in the room is dirty. Just the most amazing, the most amazing things. We YouTube Ayurveda, like Ayurveda practices. I mean, you'll see people just doing these weird things. We do this treatment called Netravasti, which actually I love. It's where you take a wheat flour and water and form it into basically like a pair of donuts or bagels. That's what they look like. You don't bake them there. It's just the flour and water. And then when somebody comes in for this treatment, I adhere the bagel onto the face like this. And then I pour warm ghee into the eye. Okay, so most people when they're hearing this, they're like, you do what? You're telling me what? You were gonna pour, you're gonna put flour on my face and then pour butter into my eye? What? But it's one of the most nourishing, restorative, regenerative treatments for the eyes. It reverses glaucoma. It's the best treatment for dry eyes, like for long-term changes. But my point is like, what? You just pour <laughs> butter into the eye. It's not butter though, it's ghee. Clarified butter is very different than regular butter. I'll talk about that at our health food store tours, which I'm gonna be leading at New Leaf. And um, we don't, I don't remember the dates right now, but we'll let you know the dates. Oh, you know the dates. Yes. Shout it out. Saturday, April 25th at 10.30 in Capitola, and May 6th, that's a Wednesday, on the west side at 10.30. Awesome. <laughs> so the last Wednesday in April, no, I'm sorry, the last Saturday in April in Capitola, and the first Wednesday in May. Okay. So, okay, so here we go. So the first thing that you want to learn is how to use this tool. What is this called? A dry brush. A dry brush, yay! Gold stars for everybody. Okay, since the lymphatic system is a one-way system and we need to manually move it, these lymph nodes are fairly close to the surface. Like when I do massage and anyone does massage, you can feel somebody's lymph nodes when they're full, like overly full, which means the garbage collector is working overtime and is really frustrated and is wondering why he doesn't get double pay. <laughs> Or you can feel when the lymphatic nodes are really dry and stuck from a, in a different way. You can also feel when they're inflamed, right? Most people notice when they're getting sick that 
they have inflamed lymph nodes at the throat. Okay, so to affect change, to get the lymphatic fluid moving, we start with the feet. So, okay, I am using the chair for this. I'll even take off my sandal. But I'm gonna start at the tops of my feet because that's where my lymph nodes are sitting. And the nodes are the ones you really wanna get moving. You wanna get them to just secrete up towards the heart. It's always feet to heart, hands to heart. So I usually do this naked. Please don't picture that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you just really, you're just going all the way up. Now, if you're really depleted and tired, it's not a great idea to be like this, <laughs> right? It's like sort of abusive. So if you're really tired and you're trying to move your lymph, I'm gonna talk about even a better body care practice for that but your movements would be a little bit more smooth and slow. But if you're really sluggish and heavy and wet and feeling super dense and thick, and you're just like, oh God, I just want things to get moving, then it's fine. Then you can really do quick, slow strokes and you always go all the way to the heart and from the hands to the heart. And then you can also get your, the lymph on the sides of your neck, you move down to the heart, but you don't do your face. Don't dry brush your face, okay? <laughs> so that's number one. These cost $10 at New Leaf or Staff of Life. Um, usually they come on a wooden handle because they're meant to be like in the shower, like a loofah, but I just pull the handles off and give them to Goodwill, hoping that maybe someone at Goodwill has a use for a wooden handle missing the dry brush. <laughs> Probably they don't, but that's what I do. Okay, so that's, that's really, if you Google dry brushing, the benefits of dry brushing, hold on one sec, um, you will, there will be like 5,000 articles on why it's so great. Because it's not just moving your lymph, it's like sloughing off dead skin cells, it's getting your blood to move. So for someone who's pretty sedentary, it could be their exercise, their daily exercise. And just to get circulation moving, helps us relax on a deeper level. The nervous system relaxes more. We might sleep better. So like circulation, especially in Ayurveda, it's like definitely where it's at, right? When circulation's good, everything's moving. Yes, you, you both do have the questions. dry brushing when you're dry, not like when you're wet in the shower? Well, so I usually dry brush. What I usually do is I dry brush before I get dressed or before I take a shower. Like I don't take a shower every single day. So if I'm just getting dressed, then you know, I'm gonna do it then. Um, I have bought a couple of dry brushes that were like, they were really abrasive. So it was like when I did it dry, I was like, ow, ow, ow. And I'm like, okay, no, this isn't how I wanna do self care by hurting myself. So those ones I've put in the shower and I dry brush when my skin is wet. And because it's a particularly abrasive brush, it still really moves the lymph, it's great. Actually, I have one that I'm gonna buy again and keep in my shower. Like I've kind of, for myself, I've kind of now determined which brand I can use for the, the wet shower and which one to use for the dry. This is literally like the cheapest one that you'll get at Staff of Life. Because some of them cost 15 and have prettier wood. This is the most basic one. They sell it at Way of Life. Also, the Yerba Prima dry brush. This is the one I use when I'm dry. What was your question? Do you do it daily? Yes. Daily, you can do it more than once a day. So it's, it's a, and it's, you know, mm, I mean, I caution against like doing it, you know, 20 times a day just because you're like, you know, it's kind of like an anger thing or a, a fear thing. Like, I, I gotta get it out, I gotta get it out. It's like, you know, just a couple times a day is gonna be plenty, you know, for most of us, right? Okay, this is like one of my Ayurvedic teachers. He's an herbal, he's been an Ayurvedic herbalist for 40 years and he's so brilliant. He had a client that was basically comatose, like this person who had just been, she was so, in Ayurveda it's called kothic when you're just so heavy, wet, and dense, to the point of being like she was, hadn't spoken in five years. She was like, you know, so depressed she could barely like lift her arm. And he gave her cayenne pepper 
incrementally tiny amounts building up to larger amounts right to get her circulation moving and one day he just he got a call that she wanted to speak to him so that alone was just like what she wants to talk because she'd never said anything and he comes in and she was like I forget what she said but it was something so funny like she'd finally just it woke her up you know it was kind of like that shit's hot or something you know like it was like she finally like got it up you know okay I'm getting hot I want to move the microphone okay so okay so kind of going a little bit deeper than uh, well, quite a bit deeper than the dry brush is using a gua sha which is actually a Chinese uh, massage tool um, it's a scraping tool so the, this beautiful boomerang shaped wooden one this is actually made by my Ayurvedic teacher's husband I was like that beautiful <laughs> um, and I have a bunch for sale today so I made a, I just got a bunch from the center up there in Sebastopol where I went to school um, but this when it's a scraping tool you know you get to go deeper so this is actually going to not just move the lymph and the blood but it's also going to affect if there's any blood stagnation or if there's pain like kind of like um, we would do with the foam rolling Right? You can get really specific on certain lines or meridians or muscles or like doing myofascial release on yourself. Right? These are these Ayurvedic body care things, these are things that you're gonna do when you're at home alone or with someone that you like you kind of do everything in front of. You know what I mean? So you know you could just be like <laughs> watching the latest. <laughs> God, I'm such a dork. It's the latest Tom Cruise movie. Why am I saying that? I don't know. But uh, I don't watch it. But you know, you just go, oh my God, look at him. Wow. You know, for two hours, you could be doing this. And you will really affect deep change. You might bruise. When there's blood stagnation, it, it can sometimes create like a strawberry on the skin, or that's nothing to worry about. Like, I kind of, when I've got, um, you know something stagnant I kind of go for that because if, it, if it's a bruise it means that you've released that stagnation of blood and now it can kind of diffuse so this is an amazing tool um, why don't I'll pass this around and you guys can feel what it feels like you can use any angle on these gua sha's it doesn't have to be the most obvious like inside of the boomerang shape um, and then the last thing sort of in my series of lymphatic body care practices is, is well it's a two-part thing and one of these things is in the raffle basket so if you haven't yet like put your name down to win the Ayurvedic body care raffle bag you crazy <laughs> you need to go put your name in the whatever the jar there's because so I made an abhyanga how many of you have ever heard of Abhyanga? <laughs> so in Ayurveda, there's a lot of Sanskrit words. This is another Sanskrit word. It it's a means to rub oil all over thyself. <laughs> that's like yes. Sanskrit dictionary. That's not what it says, but that's my what I imagine it says. And again, you do it from your feet to your heart and from your hands to your heart. So we use oils like sesame oil would be the most warming. Coconut oil would be the most cooling. Something that's kind of in the middle would be grapeseed oil or olive oil, right? So it just depends on what your constitution is, what oil you choose to put into your abhyanga. Um, but this is the one I mentioned, like if you're kind of depleted and tired and you've been pushing really hard, especially with the challenge, because you guys have so much you can do. And I know for me, I, I want to do everything. So if that's you, the Abhyanga is probably the most important one to know how to give to yourself because it's really what you can do at night before you go to bed to totally be in nurturing mode. So this is, picture this, you put a towel down in, on the floor in a warm room in your house. It can be the bathroom or it could be the bedroom or the living room. It just has to be a warm space. You take off all of your clothes you have your little bottle of, of Abhyanga and you just basically pour some into your hand, rub your hands together and start at your feet 
and make your way up to your heart and start at your hands and make your way up to your heart. You can really especially get the breast tissue. This is really, really so important for us women to like check your breasts almost on a daily basis if you do Abhyanga daily so you're aware of changes and you start to learn like, okay, yeah, I do get more fibrous tissue a week before I bleed or, oh, I hadn't felt this before. Like, I'm gonna keep working on this. Actually, I had um, like a pain underneath, sorry, this, this is TMI, but I had a pain under my left nipple that was, I was like, what? Like, I never get pain in my breast like that. And I thought it was so strange and I got a little bit scared, but I just went to my Abhyanga and I did Abhyanga, I even did a little bit of Gua Sha and it cleared. It just was like a passing thing, but if I hadn't had that knowledge and I hadn't been able to clear it myself, you know, I would have to go to the doctor and then be scared and probably pay for tests and blah, blah, blah. All the stuff that Western medicine would be like, oh no, <gasps> you have a pain behind your left nipple. You know, like we just want to be able to also have inner wisdom. Where's Ginger? Ginger was totally up here being the Buddha before. She's now down there being the Buddha. So yeah, so the Abhyanga, I, had, I made an Abhyanga oil um, as part of the raffle basket among with, along with several other yummy treats in there, including a lip balm that I made. Um, I love to make my own body care products. And the way that you would medicate a Abhyanga you can also do this for making your own salt scrub, which is kind of going back to the dry brush, excuse me, idea of like the abrasion of the salt against the skin is gonna do a lot for, for your lymph where Abhyanga is gonna be much more of a nourishment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Kind of like Abhyanga is the yin and salt scrub is the yang when you wanna get more yin or get more yang. Um, but you medicate the oil or you medicate your salt scrub by adding herbs. In Ayurveda, we do it in all different ways, but the way I've been taught is through aromatherapy. Because aromatherapy, essential oils are the core essence of a plant and they have very specific jobs. For example, clary sage, maybe you've heard of clary sage. She's my favorite. <laughs> and I call her a she because it's a very female plant. Her flowers are pink and she is the female reproductive regulator of all essential oils. Meaning, clary sage is true medicine for women. No matter what stage in your cycle you're in, um, whether you're perimenopausal, postmenopausal, you just got your period, you don't even know if you're a girl yet or not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, ah, oh, what am I? I don't know. Um, clary sage is a great oil. So, so what I put into the Abhyanga that's in the raffle basket is a combination of doTERRA, a couple of doTERRA blends. Um, I'm super into doTERRA essential oils. It's just a, it's just a brand of oils, but I really love them. They're very pure and um, they make great blends. So they have a blend called Slim and Sassy, <laughs> which it has cinnamon as one of the main ingredients. So it's a blood sugar balancing essential oil blend. And then Zendocrine, which is an endocrine system, i.e. your hormones, an endocrine detoxification blend. So I did sort of a mix of those. That's what's in the raffle basket. And I also have those essential oils um, for sale if you're interested and wanna try them out. And, I have a sign-up sheet in the back of the room. I know that you guys are probably really overwhelmed by like, oh my God, another thing to sign up for, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But if you want, I'm doing two free webinars on aromatherapy coming up. Um, I have one on two, this Tuesday night and then another one the following week um, on a Monday night. But if you sign up for my newsletter, I'll forward you my newsletter where I give you the details about those free talks. And um, it's going to be great just if you want to learn more about aromatherapy and Ayurveda in general. Okay, so moving on, our body care practices that are absolutely essential for, uh, for home. Okay, who know, what is this? Mini no, it's a watering can for my mini garden. <laughs> You're right, it's a neti pot. So if you wake up with congestion, 
or even you get like dry inner nose like now and then but it feels like it's almost like constipation of mucus in the nose you know when you're just like god it kind of hurts mm -hmm. You want to be able to flush out whatever is building up in that channel. Ears, nose, and throat are truly all connected. So if you're even someone who tends to get sore throat, strep throat, ear infections, doing neti pot on a regular basis or knowing how to do it on an as needed basis is so key, right? This costs less than $20. Salt, the salt that you need to use every day with it is probably about 10 cents. So, you know, most of these practices are so cheap. That's why it's so empowering to know how to do these things at home and keep yourself well for so long. I mean, I almost never, I'm 42 and I never go to the doctor still. What have I gone to the doctor for? <laughs> just like, you know, just like my regular, you know, I do a checkup. But that's pretty good, right? 42? Pretty good. I'm going to show you how to do this because a lot of people are like, I'm scared, I don't know what to do. You fill it up with warm water, distilled water is best, and half a teaspoon of really good quality salt. So that's a mineral rich salt like Celtic sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. It's better than regular salt. You tilt your forehead so that it's facing the sink. You put the neti pot up to your nostril and you breathe through your mouth. And as you turn your head, so now the right if i'm doing my right nostril my left ear is now facing the sink the water is just going to flow up one side and down the other okay and then at the end you do both sides and then you can gargle with the salt water that's at the bottom and all of this mucus gets released and when the mucus gets released guess what we have less of huh mucus. yeah less mucus and brain fog Less brain fog and what's it's spring. What happens to a lot of people in spring? Less allergies. You're less of like a magnet for allergens to come and stick to your mucus. That's what allergens do. They hook. They hook into the sticky mucus that you have left hanging around. Right? Well, sorry, that's the way it is. So neti pot is one of my other really essential things. And also like, again, the ears, nose, and throat, like the connection. So sometimes I'll get like, I'll feel like my ears are really clogged and I'll do neti pot and then it's like, I just feel really clear. So neti pot and then to go with your neti pot, this is just for fun, but um, it's really effective. So again, if you're someone who tends to get allergies or you're somebody who tends to get bacterial infections, Nausea oil is an Ayurvedic recipe. This one is, um, my teacher got this recipe from the Bihar School of Yoga where she worked in the infirmary two year, for two years um, as she was learning Ayurveda and becoming a practitioner. It's ghee, sesame oil, garlic, ginger essential oil, and I think that's it. Yes, so what I do is I put fresh garlic into a jar, a dark amber glass jar. I pour sesame, over, sesame oil over it and I let it sit for three months. Mm -hmm. Then I strain out the garlic and I add the ghee, the ginger essential oil and a little more sesame oil and that's what this is. So it's pretty hot, right? It's not like, ooh, it's not gentle in terms of if you especially if you snort it which i would have somebody do if they have chronic thick congestion and or they get a lot of bacterial infections so you would just kind of plug one nose just a few drops you let it go down the back of your throat and it's a preventative it's preventative and it's also curative i guess you could use it before or you could use it while you're sick like to help you get better faster or you could use it to prevent getting sick so this is something i'll do before i get onto an airplane to india or once i'm in india this is something that i'll use a lot because there's so much pollution right so it's something i'll do to keep myself well especially in the the ears nose and throat so i make this and i have this for sale on the back table too and um the last my last few points are just um ways to sell you more shit. <laughs> just kidding. No, I'm, just, I'm not kidding. Um, 
I mean, I just want to make the digestion connection and let you know a little bit more about Ayurveda and, and how it works, right? So if immunity is intimately connected with digestion, then you've got to keep digestion moving too, right? <laughs> So spices, when people come to see me for Ayurvedic consultations, that's where I read your pulse, I let you know what your core constitution is according to Ayurveda. Are, do you, have, are you primarily ether, air, fire, water, or earth? Or in what combination are you primarily in your core? Meaning you were born that way and it's not going to ever change. Anybody can have any symptom based on what you eat, how you live, how stressed you are, how unstressed you are, whatever. But the core constitution doesn't change. So that's what we do in an Ayurvedic pulse reading is we get clear on the birth pulse, that's the core constitution, the present pulses, which are always changing, and then body care and nutrition remedies to help shift things to go in the direction you want them to go. One of the things I almost always recommend in some form or another is spices. Because like the, the comatose, kapha, depressed person who just started taking cayenne pepper, spices can change your life. In fact, that's what I would say changed my life the most when I first found Ayurveda and why I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner and how I get up here and lead talks on this is I started eating spices and it literally just changed everything about my body. My digestion improved so much. I lost like 10 pounds that I didn't, you know, I'd been like, a, you know, I'd been bulimic. I tried everything, <laughs> over exercising and like nothing ever got like that, that 10 pounds of air and water weight off of me until I started eating right for my Ayurvedic constitution and spices were a huge part of that for me. So another thing in the raffle basket is the one of my homemade digestive spice mixes. This is like, there are certain spices that are good for everybody. It's called tridoshic, because the dosha is, the, is kind of the language of Ayurveda, ether, air, fire, water, earth, translates into vata, pitta, kapha. Those are the three doshas in Ayurveda. So tridoshic foods means that it's good for all three doshas. It's gonna balance all three doshas no matter what your <laughs> symptoms are. I also have in the back of the room some homemade ghee. A lot of people like to get their ghee from me because I infuse it with the uh, mantra to Hanuman, who is the monkey god in um, you know Vedic folklore. He's 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 the like the embodiment of the true friend who really has uh, virya, which is courage, and uh, devotion, which is bhakti. He like stepped off of the tip of India and took the giantest step to save his friend's wife from an evil king <laughs> and then brought her back to his friend and they hugged. It was a really <laughs> sweet story. And so that's why in uh, yoga, Hanuman Asana is the splits. It's the monkey, you know, you're trying to be like, I'm like Hanuman. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I also have a cookbook back there, blah, blah, blah. So, my special offer, we're supposed to offer you something special at the end. <laughs> so, mine is to come and have an Ayurvedic pulse reading if you want to deepen your understanding of how you operate in the world, what's best for you, body care wise, food wise, even what type of yoga would be best. You know, like it, we really get specific. Um, so, 20 bucks off a session with me. You can just have that for like the whole year of 2015. That's the year we're in, right? Just take it for the whole year because I know you're gonna be super busy with the challenge and you'll just remind me when you come in that you're like, remember me, I'm on the challenge. I'm like, yeah, I remember you. Okay, <laughs> so that was a little bit more than 30 minutes, but thank you. And uh, any questions before we close?